guys and welcome back to our channel on today's video we are going to be talking about muzzles and which muzzle is right for your dog if you have not already don't forget to subscribe to our channel comment like our video share it so that more dog owners can get a little bit of this content that we are putting out also don't forget to follow us on our socials i'll leave all of our instagram handles and tiktok handles out here around here so that you guys can go and follow us there support us there i do post some content that doesn't make it here on youtube sometimes also i do have an announcement that i want to make on this video so make sure to stick around um, for that okay without any further ado let's get into this topic i have posted about muzzles previously on this channel i made two videos um one in which i briefly talked about a muzzle and why you would need one and another video in which i talked about muzzle conditioning as that was a request from some of you guys so if you guys do want to see those videos i'll leave them linked in this video's description as well now i know that the topic of muzzles can be very polarizing with uh the dog training community as well as just dog owners in general there seems to be a stigma around muzzles and that dogs wearing muzzles are bad dogs or dangerous dogs always have a, a bite history but that's not necessarily true and as a dog trainer and as somebody that really wants to help as many dog owners as possible i want to educate you guys and show you how beneficial a muzzle has been for not only other dogs but also my dogs personally dante is my five-year-old Kenny corso he's right here taking a really good nap i know some of you guys are like oh we want to see him we want to see him standing up but you guys if my dog wants to sleep i'm not going to be making him sit like next to me for a video okay like he has autonomy over what he wants to do so just just putting that out there he's taking a nap and so is peachy girl if you guys are completely new to this channel dante has struggled with reactivity as a puppy I was ill-advised by some other trainers on to how to train him and how to address certain things about his behavior that actually made him reactive and very fearful of people. So again, that is another reason why I am so passionate about sharing these kinds of things that have really helped me with you guys because I don't want you guys to go through the same things and have to, you know, fix unwanted behaviors uh, and all of that, just going through all that stress. So. Yes, so Dante developed reactivity and it was really, really bad to a point that he could not see strangers without losing his marbles, okay? Like he would see a person and just bark, lunge, pull on the leash, be completely unmanageable. And through training, he has improved a lot, thankfully. And um, one thing that really helped in this journey is muzzle training now a muzzle just like any training tool is just that it's a tool a muzzle isn't magical um yes a muzzle will prevent a dog from being able to open their mouth and bite down however you shouldn't put a muzzle on a dog without having the intent of using it to help your training so if your dog is you know always like picking stuff in your house like getting things they're not supposed to and getting into trouble putting a muzzle on them so that you don't have to deal with that behavior is not the way to fix that problem right you're just going to be put it's like a band-aid solution like it's not going to do anything it's not going to teach your dog not to get into trouble it's just going to maybe even create a bad association with the muzzle for your dog so very important to you know understand those things throughout dante's training journey i have used a couple of muzzles and the reason that I wanted to make this video today with you guys is because I do get asked what type of muzzle Dante is using now again just to clarify there are moments in which Dante will require a muzzle just because he's had to str he's struggled with reactivity and there are certain things that will still trigger him to this day right so just being very conscious and aware of that there are some situations in which I will muzzle him some situations I won't for example, when we go to the vet, I posted a video not too long ago about our vet visit. Dante has epilepsy, so he has had to go to the vet many times under very, under very stressful circumstances, and he also doesn't really like strangers. So it's just like a mixture of not good things for Dante, right? So having a muzzle is a measure of safety, not only for the people around him, but also for himself, right? Because if he has to be put in a situation that's high stress, if he does have a reaction, you know, it's just going to be better for everybody. Right? I'm going to be sharing three different kinds of muzzles that I have used with Dante. Um, so the first one that I 
have used with Dante is this basket muzzle. Um, this is a very, very sturdy muzzle. I could, you know, give it a description. Um, <laughs> this is a muzzle that I use on Dante. Those first couple of times that we met with his trainer when he was at the peak of his reactivity, because this muzzle is just closed all around. Um, there are some muzzles that do have an opening, which I will share with you in a bit. Um, but this muzzle was closed all around, um, had very good, it just had very good reviews and um, just seemed like the type of muzzle for the situation that Dante was going through in his life. He was extremely reactive, um, potentially a bite risk. So this muzzle was perfect for him to be handled by his trainer um, and for him to be handled in very stressful situations during training. So when I mean stressful situations is just being around triggers that he had, right? I'll link this muzzle in the description. I got it on Amazon and it has been, it has served its purpose. It's been a very good muzzle and I have been able to put this muzzle on and trust that it's gonna stay on. Now with any muzzle, um, you have to make sure that you are properly securing um, the buckles and the straps on your dog's head. You don't want to get a muzzle and, you know, let it be loose. It should be tight because if your dog gets into a scuffle or if your dog, you know, shakes his head or anything like that, if your muzzle is not put on appropriately and tightly enough, it could come off, okay? And this did happen with Dante in one situation. Um, I, you know, I think this was like the second time that I ever put a muzzle on Dante. Didn't really know what I was doing and I let it be a little bit loose because I was like, oh, you know, like, you know, I don't know. Like, I just didn't want it to be too tight, right? Like, so what happened was that we were in a training session in which Dante was training with other dogs. Dante doesn't have a problem with other dogs, but it was just part of like the training uh, uh, classes that we were going through. And the dog that um, Dante was going to be exposed to in that class had actually been in a uh, dog fighting. He was a pit bull and he was extremely aggressive and reactive with other dogs. So the moment that that dog came out, Dante and I were obviously at a distance. The moment that that dog came out, he was squealing like bloody murder. He was like, like really like losing it. The moment that he saw Dante from like a really far away distance and Dante doesn't have a problem with dogs, but obviously that was very alarming to him. So he looked towards the direction of that dog in a very quick motion and the muzzle came off and it was kind of funny because I mean trying to make light of like a difficult situation right it, it almost looked like he was like you want to start something you want to start something you know like take off his like muzzle kind of like you know that trope of like hold hold me back hold me back and like girls taking off their earrings right kind of like that it just seemed very comical at the time but that's what I'm telling you. You have to make sure that these are strapped onto your dog's head. Not like choking your dog, but you should be able, you should not be able to like be wiggling the muzzle around, right? So that is this first muzzle, very good muzzle that I had. Now the cons about this muzzle is that for longer periods of time, I would notice that when Dante would wear this, this part right here, like on the bridge of his snout, would start to get irritated um, and also, because this is a muzzle that isn't custom fit, I would also notice that like his eyes would kind of be like literally like this. So it kind of cover his eyes a little bit, like just a little bit, like if he, you know, just a little bit. That would cause a lot of irritation and friction on his snout. And um, what I've seen a lot of people do is they'll just like wrap around like a cloth or something just to like make it a little softer, right? So that contact on the skin isn't as harsh. Um, but that was the problem that I found with this muzzle. And it could, and it's obviously, you know, because of the material that it's in, wire basket material isn't very flexible and it's very hard. So that's the only con that I had with this muzzle. Of course, if you need to continue using a muzzle like this, you can put a cloth. I've seen that that works for some people. Um, but then I started my search for a muzzle that would be more comfortable. That led me to a soft muzzle, which is this leather muzzle, okay? Now, the pros about this muzzle is that one, it's like really easy for you to kind of like fold up and like package with you, put it in a bag with you if you need it, right? Like if you're going somewhere with your dog and like something unexpected happens and you need to like 
grab something real quick. It's not as big and bulky as this one, right? So that is a pro for this muzzle. Um, this is a soft muzzle, I already said that. Another pro is that because it's a soft, I didn't notice um, any irritation on Dante with this leather muzzle. Now, a con with this muzzle is, obviously if it gets wet, it's gonna get kind of stinky. I mean, it is leather, so not very um, waterproof or water resistant. Another con for this muzzle is that this muzzle, I noticed, would not allow Dante to pant. And for those of you guys who don't know, Panting for dogs is the equivalent of sweating. So when you're on a long walk and it's hot outside, it's very important that your dog is able to pant. So this is not a good muzzle for long walks. This is a good muzzle for short periods of time. This is a good muzzle to travel with, but I wouldn't recommend this muzzle for you to have on your dog for a long time. It's very dangerous if your dog can't pant. So that is, you know, I guess my review on this muzzle. I'll also leave this in the link um, I'll also link this if you guys want to see. Going back to this first muzzle, I did forget to mention that because this muzzle is a little bit bigger and it's not as tight around Dante's um, snout, Dante was able to paint on this muzzle. So that's a pro for this muzzle. Now I'm going to go over the last muzzle and my favorite one um, by far. And this is also a basket muzzle and I believe the brand is Basker Baskerville. You can see right there, that's the brand. There you go. This one is my favorite muzzle by far. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to give you all the reasons why. This is a basket muzzle so Dante is able to pant in this muzzle so if he needs to wear it for a long period of time totally fine. Um, the material for this muzzle is a lot more lightweight in comparison to this one. So in terms of comfort, this one is more comfortable on Dante. And unless Dante wears this for a really, really long time and he's like, you know, maybe like rubbing on it or anything like that, I really have not noticed any skin irritation with this muzzle. Um, next is that this muzzle has a little opening down here. Okay, so this is perfect for treats so that when you are taking your dog that maybe has a hard time with, you know, people or other dogs, this is great for counter conditioning. So what I've personally done with Dante in this muzzle is I'll take him somewhere if he's never been there before. Um, maybe, you know, because he also doesn't really like new situations. He's like a total baby. Like he looks all big and scary, but he's such a baby. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put this muzzle on, I'll take a bag of treats, and we go, and every time he sees a person, and he doesn't have a bad reaction, and he's cool, calm, and collected, bam, treat, right here. Great. This first muzzle, I cannot do that. I can try to stick my little, like, chubby fingers down there, but it's kind of awkward for, you know, Dante to, like, try to, like, look and grab for the treat, whereas this one has a nice opening. Um, that you can give your dog treats in. I used this muzzle to take Dante to the vet and overall I've been very happy with this muzzle. I would say this one is my favorite and um, I think that this fits Dante and his the time of the life that he's in right now. This one also comes in different sizes which is really great. This one is a size 6 and I figured that out just by measuring Dante's snout when you go on Amazon, it'll um, give you the manufacturer's instructions on how to measure your dog's snout and where to measure, you know, um, what size to get your dog. But Dante is a size six and this muzzle is great. I, I really love this muzzle. It's lightweight. Now, granted, it's not foldable like muzzle number two, but Dante can pant in this muzzle. I can give Dante treats in this muzzle. It's lightweight, doesn't irritate his skin. And it's, you know, it's great. I love this muzzle. He can also eat through here. Um, takeaways on this video. There are many kinds of muzzles for your dog and it's going to depend on what situation of his life your dog is in, right? Um, if you are really concerned of your dog being a bite risk or if your dog has recently bitten somebody, really needs to start training um, and you need a muzzle, maybe get the, you know, Bane looking one, right? That really is like safe. Um, granted, again, your dog wearing a muzzle doesn't guarantee that he won't be able to bite somebody because again, if they get into a scuffle and it's not fitted, you know, correctly, things can happen. But if you are, you know, being a uh, 
conscious, you're fitting the muzzle on properly to your dog, and you're not putting your dog in a situation in which they'll have a really bad reaction, and you're putting a muzzle on for training purposes, right? Then you, you're good, you're golden. Having a muzzle is a really polarizing um, debate, but there are many reasons why your dog might need a muzzle. Okay, previously when I've made two other muzzle topic videos, I was very hesitant to talk about it because Again, it's a really polarizing topic and some people feel like very, very um, opposed to dogs wearing a muzzle altogether. And my thing is, you know, I'm turning 26, like next week, <laughs> and I am almost, my mom literally was the other day was like, oh my god, you're almost 30? And I was like, mom, come on, I still have like years to go before I'm 30. But in actuality, she's kind of right. and. I was thinking to myself, you know, as a person who has suffered from chronic people pleaser-itis, I'm at a point in my life that I don't really care. Like, you know, I don't really care how people are going to take this kind of information because I know for a fact that muzzles have helped dogs for good. This video can help one person and can help one reactive dog owner, can help one aggressive dog owner then so be it. I'm not going to be like trying to like watch my words in this type of video because or try to withhold um, information about muzzles because they are important and they can really help your dog. So yeah, that's my spiel about um, saying, you know, whatever. Of course, everybody is entitled to having their own opinions, but like if you're just going to be nasty in the comments, don't watch this video and, you know, mind your business. <laughs> anyway. So, as I was saying, for those of you who don't know, um, muzzles are not only for dogs that are reactive or aggressive, but they can be for dogs that are just maybe a little bit nervous, you know, and they need to have a muzzle on. If they go to the vet, if they go to a place that might be a little bit scary for the first time. Muzzles are also used for dogs, especially like younger dogs, that might maybe live in a busy city and they are constantly eating trash off the ground until you're able to you know train your dog and do all of those things in between having a muzzle is something that can really help your dog right in the meantime in the interim again i do want to stress that a muzzle is not going to cure your dog's bad behavior right so your muzzle is just a tool and it's going to enable you to train your dog without your dog being of harm to himself or other people so that's why a muzzle is important another reason why people might use a muzzle in some countries, and I think even in some states here in the U.S., um, certain dog breeds are banned or certain dog breeds are on a list of, you know, potentially dangerous dog breeds. For example, in Spain, the Doberman is in that list, the Akita is in that list, um, Doggo Argentinos are in that list. If you are curious about looking at that, if you go there, um, it doesn't specifically say, you know, Kiny Corso, but it says if your dog has a big blocky head and it's, you know, uh, muscular and it's, you know, follow this kind of criteria, then, you know, it's considered a dangerous dog breed, potentially dangerous dog breed. And if you're going to go in public transportation, your dog has to be muzzled and they have to have a leash with a certain amount of length to it. Now, whether you agree with this or not, you know, whatever. But if you go to a different country and you have one of these dogs, you have to abide by those rules, right? So it's just, it's just for you to be aware that there are many reasons why a dog might need a muzzle and it's not a bad thing. The stigma of dogs having to wear a muzzle are actually that dogs that wear a muzzle are bad dogs. No, that's not true. That's very far from the truth. And if anything, people should feel very empowered to put a muzzle on their dog if they need training, right? So don't judge people. If you see a dog with a muzzle, doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad dog. Also, it doesn't mean that you should approach and try to pet. Just leave that person alone, leave that dog alone, you know, just, that's all, like, let everybody have, like, a good time, you know, let people have fun, let people be able to train their dogs without feeling like they're being, like, judged for it, right, so, yeah, so those are the muzzles that, um, we've gone through, I mean, luckily, Dante has improved a lot, um, in terms of his reactivity, but I'm always very honest with you guys, there are moments that I will put a muzzle on him, you know, because, I want him to be safe. Actually, I should also start, um, you know, getting Peachy Girl used to it and conditioned to a muzzle as well because, again, you never know when your dog might need it. Another reason that I did forget to mention is if your dog is in, like, a life-threatening situation, it's always just good to, have, like, 
teach your dog to be at least comfortable with a muzzle um, because you know a sick dog can behave very differently than they usually do um, so yeah now the announcement that I wanted to give on this video is that I have officially created a website that has virtual dog training consultations available as well as in-person dog training consultation available I have been nervous about putting this out because it's just a big deal to me and um, I have been nervous about sharing this um, but if you are interested, you can go on the link in the description and see any uh, services that might be good for you and your dog. Um, so yeah, I'm here to help you guys. If you are interested in any of the services that we are offering, just go ahead and click on the contact form, put in your information, put in your dog breed, and yeah, let's get training. <laughs> so I'm really excited about it. Um, again, kind of nervous to like launch something because it's like, different and yeah I'm just kind of nervous but um if you're interested <laughs> totally check it out but yeah so I hope you guys like this video I hope this video was insightful and helpful and comment down below if you found a muzzle that you really like if I forget to mention one thing you can also um get muzzles custom made but with all things custom made it's generally going to drive the price up so that's just something that you should keep in mind if you are thinking about, you know, having the muzzle long term and you want something really well fitted, then yeah, go ahead, do it. Um, but I personally have not gotten anything custom made. I've been very happy with um, the latest muzzle that we've been using. So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, check out all the links down below. T check out the virtual dog training consultations if you need help with your dog. And yeah, we're here to help you and see you guys until the next video. Bye.